we like to start with something funny. And uh, I heard one Sunday morning there was this man that walked into a church in blue jeans and a t-shirt and an old cowboy hat. Some of the members were absolutely appalled. They sent the pastor notes saying, you need to express to him how to dress appropriately for church. So after the service, the, the pastor came up to the man and said, hey, listen, I want you to pray about what to wear and ask God before you come back to my church. So the next week, the guy came back, blue jeans, t-shirt, hat, same thing. The pastor came up to him and said, hey, I thought I said, I need you to pray about that before you came back to my church. The man looked at him squarely and said, listen, I asked God expressly what to wear to come back to your church, and this was his answer to me. I don't know, I've never been there before. <laughs> the name of the church, I'm okay. <laughs> you have your Bible, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that's true in our lives, and thank you that you don't have a dress code for us. Lord, you have, you have a relationship code for us. You want us to be in a relationship with you, creator of the universe. You died so that we have a relationship with you. Help us to understand that more today than ever. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So this is the name of the series that we're beginning. It's called Restore. And if we look at the word restore and just dive into, what does it mean? If I looked it up in the dictionary, I'd find this description. Return to previous condition. Repair, renovate. Think about an old house. I mean, we had a TV show called This Old House, right? What's that about? That's about restoring an old house from what it was back to something new. Making it new, right? Anybody need something restored in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, the list is huge. That's why we're hitting this subject. And uh, we like the term like new or brand new. I mean, if you're looking at something on Craigslist, what do you want to see? You want to see the word new somewhere or like new, right? Amen? New. We love something new. New shoes, new shirt. I didn't even go here and I like this shirt. You know what I mean? It was new. It's new. Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 23 says this. And this is what's cool about God. You like things new. He can bring something new to you every day. He promises right here. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are, say it with me, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. They are new. And if the faithfulness of God is new every morning, then what comes with faithfulness is available in a new way to make. Amen? Amen. In a new way to you. And this is what we want to understand today. So more specifically, we're going to dive into, we want to talk to you today about restore within. Restore within. Look at your neighbor and say, you need restored within. You need, you need restored within. Hey, anybody hear that with conviction from your neighbor? You need restored from within. Yeah. Some of you don't have a neighbor. You need to turn to yourself and say, I need... Uh, okay, try, try, try to put yourself in there to your neighbor. I need restored within. Here we go. I need restored within. I need restored within. Have you ever seen that show called uh, Flea Market Flip? <coughs> We might fit for six of us, this isn't good. It's on HGTV, that's the problem, isn't it? None of the men have seen that. I was forced. But now we're in season two on Netflix, so I have submitted it, and it's pretty cool now. All right, let me explain. Ezra even likes it. So flea market flip is this. Um, two people come in as a team versus two other people on a team, and they're given 500 bucks to go to a flea market. Anybody know what a flea market's named for? Good call. Who said it? You win a free something. Uh, free, free coffee in the basement. There we go. Um, it, it's named for flea market uh, by the, the French because uh, things that would end up in a flea market usually had fleas in it. So, 
made that just like you itch your hair the rest of the day. Yeah. So free market flip is you get 500 bucks as a team, you go to this flea market, and you got one hour to pick out things that match criteria that they give you to take from its old, broken down, rusted condition and make it into something crazy awesome so that you can sell it in New York City for a profit. And if you do make the most profit, your team gets five grand to go home with, all right? So flea market flip, it's only 20 minutes on, on Netflix, but that's all I can handle. And so we've been really enjoying this flea market flip thing. And I want this, this sermon to, this, this, this thought of flipping things, to be ever present in your mind the rest of today. There's some things that God wants to flip in our lives. So many of us have some rusted things. Maybe some, some poor attitudes that we've flipped. Maybe we have some limitations in our short lives right now. We found that we're competing with technology that's changing so fast. Amen? Amen. That by the time, you know, my new phone, by the time, this isn't six months old. The S4? Well, I don't know what's out now. S6? I'm too behind already. And it shows. When I get on hers, hers is fast. Mine's like, I'm praying about it. I'll get back to you in 20 minutes. What? I want the answer now. Technology is just so slipping. To stay with something new in technology, either you got to rob a bank, get a really good job, steal it from your neighbor. I don't know what you got to do to keep up with it because it's tripping over itself. That's a problem for you and me. Here's why. All of a sudden, you feel out of the loop. In just a few months, if you lag behind some of your friends who are all on Facebook and all on FaceChat, I call it. It's not FaceChat, is it? Snapchat. It's Snapchat. I don't even know all the terms. I, Twitter, I, I mean, hashtag, I don't even know what that means. It's like another language to me. Amen? Amen. Anybody not know what hashtag means? You've heard it, you have no idea what it means. How many have no interest to know what it means? <laughs> All right, thank you. All right. Some things, they're just so cutting edge and they stay new and we feel kind of older generation just because we don't keep up. We feel like a term called outdated. Maybe there's a rusted area of our self-esteem because, man, we used to feel useful. We used to feel like I could get the first base and second base without pulling my hamstring. I proved this year that that can't occur anymore. That hurt. And then I was out the rest of the year. You can feel unuseful. You can feel dim and faded. You can start looking at yourself in the mirror saying, I'm getting older. And there's nothing I can do about it. Maybe it's a financial limitation. Maybe it's a broken down, dilapidated relationship that you say, man, this relationship is just, I might as well take it to the flea market. It is, is no worth to me anymore. I don't use this relationship. I don't even talk to them anymore. They don't have time for me. Maybe you have a wreck in your life that you didn't see coming and it happened to you. Or maybe you're the reason it did happen. And you feel wrecked this morning. I want you to know that uh, God's got a passion to restore you. God has an incredible, more than you have a passion to be restored, God has a passion to put you in a place of newness, to renew you daily, to bless you beyond what you can imagine. How many of your parents in the room? If you had an opportunity and owned all things and, and you could bless your children, would you do it? Put your hand up. Would you do it? Some that didn't raise your hands, parent, you know, children don't look now. <laughs> yeah, I'd bless them. I'd give them the world. That's your God. And we're made in His likeness and His image. He wants to bless you beyond your wildest dreams. But sometimes the limitation isn't Him. It's me. I, I have a passion for uh, rebuilding vehicles. And, I, and, and talking about flipping something, I, I went to the flea market, if you will, eBay. That's a flea market. I went to eBay and I found a, a 2006 Jeep for 7,500 bucks. It, it was only 2008 or so when I found this. It had less than 30,000 miles on it, and I bought it for 7,500 bucks. That's a good, that's a good deal. I'm buying low. I want to sell high. Actually, I just wanted to own it because it had a Hemi. So I got it home. 
I put two grand into it. Now I got 9,500 bucks into it. I used it for three years. I put 30,000 miles on it, and I sold it with 60,000, 59,000 miles on it for 11,500 just a few years ago. That's a flip. That's the flea market flip you're looking for. That's not just a couple grand difference, that's a several grand difference because I got to use it for three years, that's depreciation, and I got to put 30,000 miles on it. That's a lot of depreciation. God helped me to come about that situation, and I had to work very diligently to see that restoration take place. And if you're here this morning saying, I want the restoration, but I don't want to do the elbow work, it's not for you. Look at your neighbor and say, this is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. You're going to have to work at this. This doesn't just happen because Sunday morning we talk about everything being new. And then, hey, well, I, I, want the, I want that thing that's broken and taken me. We did it with my, my uh, 2003 Dodge Ram. This is my 2003 Dodge Ram. I bought it in 2005. So I've owned it for 10 years. And um, it's been in like every picture. Of, of the kids going on vacation or whatever it might be, we're having a hard time letting go of it. So you know what I did? This was the rust forming down in the lower left-hand corner. When I took the box off it, it just fell apart. It was, I was like, oh, glad I didn't fall apart while I was on it. Um, and I tore it all down and refinished it and with a lot of work over vacation, made it look like, oh! <laughs> But what's my illustration? What am I saying to you? It, it takes hard work. It's going to be a commitment on your part if you want to see something restored back to... You know what God does? I don't think God restores. I, I think He... There's another word maybe. Like regenerate. To something brand new. Unprecedented. He wants to take... Like Nick's testimony. I love going back to that a moment where you say, God didn't take me back to my same old neck. God took me to something that's never been. You know what I mean? God's doing in me something I've never experienced. And this is what we want you to flip from. The things you were to the things that God can do in you. God has a way of restoring a guy named Moses who kills a guy, runs into the desert, and guy goes, picks him out of the desert, and he talks to the burning bush, and he says, me? I've chosen you. And he's like, what? I'm a killer. What are you going to do with me? And I don't even talk right. And God uses Moses to lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt and out of bondage and into their greatness. God takes a guy named uh, Saul. His name becomes Paul. What was he? Murder. Kind of the same thing. If he didn't murder directly, he was pretty much making the orders. And he goes on to write two-thirds of the New Testament in here. Hey, how wrecked did you say your life was again? How new can your life be made? I think it can be made in the same likeness as the heroes of the faith that we talk about and we forget the things they did. How about David, who committed adultery with Bathsheba and had her husband killed on the front lines? And God goes on to call David what? Man after God's own heart. There's nobody else there. That's awesome. That's restoration. That is regeneration. That is what God can do. I want to ask you, what are you settling for in your life? What's wrecked and you're saying, oh, I'm just settling there. Yeah, the rust is pretty much eating that thing from the inside out. But that's all I got. That's all I ever have. And you're settling there. You're settling for junk. And God's saying, I want to do something with that. But it's going to cost you something. But I want to do something with that. Will you trust me? Will you step towards me? Will you put your elbows into this and get it done? Psalm 51, verse 10. King David says this. After his sin. Create in me a clean heart of God. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my salvation. And renew a right spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. 
so that sinners will turn back to you. There you go. That's kind of what it looks like to walk back towards God. Amen? And what is happening in your life that needs fixed? That needs tweaked? David got to flip from, uh, from shame to a clean heart. He had to flip from uh, the flea market, market spiritual bankruptcy uh, for his present filling with God's presence. King David got to trade his, his loss of joy in for the joy of his salvation again as he came back crying out to God. I'm going to ask us to maybe consider flipping from sinner to saint. Amen? Amen. If there's something you're doing right now you know is breaking the heart of God, flip it this week. Amen? Well, flip it today. Flip it. Flea market, flip it. Oh, by the way, I didn't tell you the part. When they, when they buy low, they got to pay. They got to really work diligently to take those items and make them like you, the whole team, and flip it. You didn't just walk out of the flea market and go to New York City and sell same as is. No. There's hard work in the middle. I want us to consider flipping from bitter to better. That person that's irking you and you wonder why they got away with what they did, let him go. Bitterness isn't going to help you. Well, betterness will. Give it to God. Flip it. Maybe flip from victim to victor. Amen? Amen. You're not a victim. Stop being the victim. You play the victim role. Poor me. Everybody you see, you got to share your pity story with. Nobody wants to hear it. A. B. It's not biblical. C. It's killing you. God didn't create you to be a victim. He created us as more than conquerors in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 Help us, Jesus, to flip my mentality into the victor column. And Lord, help us to stop envying others and what they have and rejoice in what they rejoice in. That's biblical. And one last thing I'll leave you with. Some of you need to just flip your garage, you know what I mean? Yeah, amen. Yeah. There's an amen in that row. I saw it. Amen. I saw it. Yeah. Oh, Robbie's like, mm -hmm. Dad's got to flip the garage. It's bad. It's not good. What are you going to take to flip your garage? Sam's building a whole new one. That is so bad. He's building a new one. But that's new. That's awesome. He's flipping it. He's going to take you making a decision and getting out there and doing something with your hands. So this is not just tangible for the spirit, it's tangible for life. This restore idea sounds fantastic. We're all excited. You're thinking of things I'm sure that you want to flip, that you want to restore. But sometimes, sometimes, I don't know about you, I just can't see it. I can't. You know, they, they on that show, that flea market flip, they'll pick something out and they'll say, oh, this is awesome, and it can be. And I'm like, I'm not getting that at all. They're going to lose, right there. They're going to lose. And then they end up making it into something really incredible and then selling it for more money than I would ever spend on it. And it shocks me every time. But I think, it, so does some of you feel that way? I just, I just can't see it. I just, I'm not getting it. And sometimes in our own lives, we can't see it. And it's hard to see that there's potential left within because we've only known pain. We've only known humiliation in our lives. Maybe there's rejection or abandonment. And we don't even know where it began. It's just always been there. Maybe we know where it started. And, and it, but we still have a hard time because even though we can pinpoint it, it's just all we've ever known. It's all we know how to believe in it. And we live that way with that kind of mindset for so long that it becomes reality. And, and thinking about letting go of that and getting a new reality might feel a little scary because it is hard work. Because it, it, it means that we're going to be different. And I don't know, different might be scary. But you know what? If different is with God, then it's safe. Amen. It's good and it's safe if it's with God. Sometimes we have that new reality, that mindset. Thoughts like this, I'm just no good. You might be thinking, or, but I'm not worth taking care of. Or, I am unimportant. I am unsafe, you might think. Some of you might believe that you are unlovable. Romans chapter 12 tells us, Do not be conformed to this world, 
but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. In other words, don't comply with and become what those around you say you are. Don't align your thoughts and beliefs with those things, the false messages that maybe you've heard all your life and that you've heard of so long, now you're telling yourself and replaying that tape over and over again and telling yourself, don't be conformed to that, but flip it. Be transformed. The original Greek word there in the Bible for the word transform is metamorpho. What does that sound like that you remember from science class? Metamorpho. Yeah. Metamorphosis. Right. And so what's the first thing you think of? A caterpillar into a butterfly because that's the most common example of that that we learn in school. It's been flipped. The, the, the caterpillar we gotta let go of that caterpillar mindset that keeps us on the ground, that keeps us moving slowly, that keeps us with a limited vision. And let go of that and let God flip that into being a butterfly that can fly free with a new mindset of freedom. If you're still having a hard time seeing it, I want to tell you that there is one who can see the potential in you, who sees you differently than you see yourself. And that's God. God sees what you can become because he sees what he created you to be in the first place. And he wants to restore that and refresh that and renew that to become what, you, what he wants you to be right now. There was a woman in scripture that had been going through pain. She had been going through rejection, humiliation for 12 years. She had the opportunity to reach out and touch the cloak of Jesus' garment as he walked by. And she did. She took that opportunity. She reached out and she touched it. And when she did, the very first thing that happened next was Jesus turned around and looked at her. The Bible says he looked at her. He didn't just notice her. He didn't just be like, oh yeah, there's a woman. He looked at her deeply. And he saw all of her pain. He saw all of her anguish. He saw everything that she has ever lived with. And he loved her and accepted her. Yes, she was. How do I know that? Because the next thing he did was he spoke to her and he said, Daughter. That is a term of endearment. A very gentle word spoken. A term of love. A, term, a gentle, lovely, I love you, daughter. You are mine. He was claiming relationship with her. He was affirming her in who she was when he said the word daughter to her. Jesus wants to do the same thing with you. By the way, she was healed and made whole, the Bible says. Made whole. And sometimes we don't even know what it means to be made whole, but that's being flipped. That's being restored and renewed. Made whole. And Jesus wants to do that with you. And right now you have that same opportunity that that woman had to reach out and touch. But notice, she had to be the one to reach out and touch and then Jesus will do the same thing. When you do that, he will turn and look at you. And he will, he, will, he will look at you and see all the pain and all the anguish you've ever lived with. And he will look through all that and love you. And see what you can become. And he will, he will look at you and say loving words to you. And say, you are mine. You are my child. I want you to be mine. I died for you. He says that and he does those things because he loves you. Sometimes we need that gentle reminder of who you are to him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we are your beloved. Some of us need to trade in our rejected label. And flip it. I am accepted. I'm beloved. Some of us need to trade in our broken status for healed, for new. It's not that we need new stuff, we don't need new equipment. It's not that I really need new relationships, God. It's that I need you. To come and make all things new. All things new in my life. And Lord, that has a lot about what I perceive things as. It's going to take a lot of hard work to maintain relationships. 
to maintain the garage, Lord, to maintain the uh, the status of my heart <coughs> from one that fears being rejected when I walk into a room and become one who walks into a room knowing not in pride but in security. I am accepted by the Most High God. I come in your power. I come with your peace. I am yours. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. Lord, flip some things in our lives this week. Help us to continually flip things around. When our attitude starts going south, flip it. And if somebody doesn't pick up on it, maybe a family member that's here today can say, hey, time to flip that. Time to flip that switch off. Time to flip that around and, and find some newness in that area. I love you. I, I want to help you flip that. I want to pray with you so we can see that flipped in our lives. Help us, Lord, to live more spiritually minded this week and the rest of our lives because we need restored within daily. We need renewed by your grace and your mercy that's new every morning. We accept it, and we want to be changed. So, Lord, every one of us in this room said, we got things that are broken. We've got things that need touched and healed. I ask you, Jesus, that we be faithful this week to see you flipping. And, Lord, faithful in this moment to say, God, I need you. So with heads bowed and eyes closed, I'm just looking around. I want to ask you, is there something God put on your heart to flip and you need to commit that this week I'm going to be diligent to see God flip that in my life? Raise your hand right now. Amen. Jesus, touch those commitments that are made to you. There are many or most of us in this room to make a commitment to flip that. I don't want to live in that anymore. I don't want to live in that sin anymore. I don't want to make those choices anymore. God, I want to honor the King and I want to see newness come into my life so that others will look at my life and want you. They need you because I need you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love Good you stuff. Have a great week.